Hello everyone, we're back again with another showcase video, this time focused uh, on the frigates and cruisers, uh, but we also want to uh, show the progress on the anti-fighter units because we changed them a little bit. And today I'm not alone, today I have my good buddies here, uh, that one bullet. Hi. And President. Yo, what's up? You might know these two people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the first battle of the day uh, is the fighter squadron from the last time. So one Y-wing, X-wing, A-wing against a radar corvette, which is like sun-sided, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. So last time I think the fighters won. Yeah, last time, last time the fighters won, the raider was too. Its guns were too inaccurate to be able to be effective. So this time around, we have uh, kind of more fine-tuned it, so it should be a lot better at that anti-fighter role. Yeah, specifically um, the repeating lasers it had, uh, we made a new projectile for that, uh, which is only used on anything bigger than, like, Corvette and bigger. Not on fighters, because that would be too much. They can have more inaccurate weapons, as it turns out. And the laser cannons are now pretty much pinpoint accurate. They will only miss if the target moves. And it's very very small targets. But against these big rebel fighters, it will like most of the time hit them and do good damage to them. Yep, so that also means that we now have a projectile that we can put on uh, bigger ships for anti-fighter. Yeah, this pretty much pretty much shreds them now. Um, also, <laughs> another thing. Go, and you're done. Yeah, and he just zooms away. <laughs> He's doing the kiting, and there he comes back. Cut. He can just run away from the bombers. Um, another thing um, about the laser cannons is they have a min range. So if you get really close, they won't shoot. Which was before the laser cannons only really hit if you were right on top of the enemy. So, yeah, now they will always shoot, they will take some distance to start firing, but yeah, it's, it works well now. Okay, should we do the Empire opposite test now with the CR-90? Why not? Okay, let's go in there. So here, same test as in the last video, CR-90 against TIEs, Interceptors and Bombers. Um, but yeah, laser cannons got buffed and the fighter weapons got nerfed in accuracy against uh, bigger targets, which makes them less oppressing. Because if you remember last time, the CR-90 just got completely fucked by those interceptor lasers. And that Not won't that really happen anymore. that much anymore. The other thing to remember about the CR-90 is it's not dedicated anti-fighter, since rebel ships are a little bit more um, multi-role purpose. So really the CR-90's role is more of a corvette hunter and a support ship, uh, like a fleet filler. Um, whereas the raider that you just saw was is absolutely mainly only anti-fighter and maybe a little bit of corvette duty. Just speed us up uh, because as you can see they those units can't really touch each other. Just kind of the situation now. Uh, th this is mainly because the Empire fighters are fast and small. So even though the laser cans are like perfectly accurate now, they will shoot at the location that the fighter was before it started. Uh, like when it shoots, it maybe targets here, but then the fighter's already there, so it will miss. Like that. So if the fighters like coming straight at the corvette and the corvettes shoot, like uh, if both targets are not really maneuvering much, then you'll see a lot of kills from the CR-90 when it comes to anti-fighter. Yeah. The important thing to, about this too is that the CR-90 is not touched at all. So Imperial fighters, unshielded Imperial fighters, which is important because a corvette is tech zero on our tech list, so you get the, to build them right away. And the TIE Fighters are also the first thing the Empire gets. So it's like, 
against these targets, the CR-90 can't be touched, which means it could stick around and keep mowing down ties as they come into your fleet. But if, like, if this was made any more stronger, then your TIE Fighters would melt like paper and there wouldn't really be yeah, a like, point to TIE Fighters anymore. Yeah, like we so. wanted to have some survivability. Like, if you do a bombing run with TIE Bombers and there's like three or two Corellian Corvettes in the way of your target, that you can still fly past, maybe you lose one or two bombers and take some damage, but you don't melt <laughs> like it was the case before, where anti-fighter just shut you down so hard that it was like, okay, there's an anti-fighter ship, I guess my fighters will die now in two seconds. Yep, so those matchups now look a lot better. Uh, I'd say we go CR-90 against Raider now. If you want to, mm -hmm. yeah, you could it. also show DP20 if oh, yeah. you want, which is another cool one. Yeah, then we just do okay. The DP20, so, okay, bullet, you go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, I wanted to say like the DP20 is has a lot more anti corvette weaponry, it also has assault missiles, so really it punches up a class. Uh, so what we're gonna see here, it has a couple of repeaters to take down fighters, and this like because rebels are really well rounded, so they have a little bit of everything. But yep. the thing about this situation is. Uh, this DP-20 you have to tech into, and the Raider you have to tech into, so it's a much more fair uh, matchup when it comes to tech, but then also weaponry, because both have missiles, both can hit each other, as you can see right here, they'll fire at each other. Yeah, but the missiles from the DP-20 are specifically yeah. anti-corvette, as you can see, it has the defense debuff now, so... Our heavy laser cannons here can do a lot more damage. This boy is speeding off now, so let's pursue. Let's get in there. <laughs> this is great, I love these fights. Now. Yeah, the AI will always kite and... Oh, it's pretty close this time. This oh. <laughs> that was close. Yeah, the heavy concussion yeah. missiles of the Raider can still do some damage. Okay. Uh, another unit that was very... Um, inaccurately depicted uh, before was the Lancer Frigate and yeah now uh, it also has a new the new weapons that the Raider got the point defense the repeating point defense is what we'll call them and it has a shit ton of them it has seven I think so something like that and they're all duels yeah so the damage is still pretty high yeah. Also has a min range, so when you're right on top, it won't shoot. Stuff like that. It also has point defense, like the ability, so it can shut down at least some of the torps and rockets thrown at it. Oh yeah, this is this is the amount of fire to expect from a raider now, or oh, red operator Lancer. <laughs> really, it's pretty much pinpoint accurate. But the damage isn't so high that it melts them insta. Like the A-Wings now, oh shit, I'm near radar, now I need to get away. You still have some time to react, right? Like these X-Wings right. now, I could be like, okay, fuck it, I'm out. And then the range isn't too great, so you can avoid the Raiders. It's kind of what we want to happen to. Like if they would so just melt you completely. Yeah. Basically going back to what was being said in the CR-90 part, actually I don't know what's coming win in this video but uh we don't want anti-fighter dudes to be hard counter to star fighters especially for the shielded rebel fighters you have time to react your bombers can still fly past the lancers and get to the target it's just going to be a question of how many and in what condition and will they make it back yep i would also get suppressed by the raider so even when they do a bombing run um they won't fire uh that frequently, so the damage is lowered as well. That's and the those are, yeah, very, very big improvement. And those repeating point defense weapons, they're not going to be on uh, capital ships or anything like that. Yeah, very specialized. Okay, next fight. Uh, we're starting now with the frigates, finally. So we're just doing the classic, the Nebulon B frigate, the frigate of Star Wars, I would say. And we're putting it up against the other <laughs> frigate of Star Wars now, because of squadrons, the 
Aquitans Cruiser. Aquitans Light Cruiser. Confusing name, but it's still a frigate. So this fight is... Okay, what would you guys think who wins? Depends on the range. I am going to put my money on the Aquitans. I would say if you get in close, the Nebulon B wins. Okay, I will try to get in close. I still would also put the money on the Aquitans, though the Aquitans' role is more leaned towards punching up as well. Uh, like it uses mainly uh, long range turbo lasers, so it can stay behind the front line and just do supporting fire against enemy cruisers and capital ships. Against Corvettes, it will miss a lot. Um, and against fighters, it has some laser cannons, but do those won't really help it as much. Nebulon is more, yeah, like like all most rebel ships are more an all rounder. Has like one turbo laser, I think. And then yeah. heavy laser cannons and laser cannons. So the heavy laser cannons are the specific anti corvette weapon now. Very accurate. They can punch through the light armor of the corvettes pretty well. Well, the laser cannons are your somewhat good against fighters and can still work against bigger ships as well. That's what we imagine, like, game design-wise, what these weapons should do. Okay, let's see this. Nebulon B also has a very quick recharge on the shields. Sad. It can uh, still we're shoot in, away. We're in the Nebulon B's ideal range. Yeah. Like the Aquitans could artillery from further away, but uh, if only it had a bigger fleet with it so that it could see. Yeah, but now yeah, once the shields are down, this will turn on badly. But it starts kiting now, so that's a mistake. Oh no! Come on! Don't 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 get into the blind spot, Aquitanism. I need you to win this. Uh, Turbo laser missed. <laughs> So another thing that you guys will see just from this is that turbo lasers aren't firing at the fighters. Ah, so true. Yep. the reason why that was done was because we're kind of treating turbo lasers and primary weapons, just generally speaking, as more battleship rounds, longer reloads, higher damage. So when you have those types of weapons just kind of firing random shots off at fighters, then it's wasting a lot of the damage potential of the unit and could cost you that unit in a fleet fight. Yeah. So, and okay, with ahead. the addition of the point defense laser, uh, the capital ships will at least get a couple of those, so it's not completely. So that, that way, the point defense lasers are firing at the targets that are supposed to be hit, and then the turbo lasers can focus on the ships, and a ship with just turbo lasers isn't just stuck there, not shooting. Yeah, so right. all the ships pretty much, maybe with a few exceptions, will have some weapons to fire at fighters. A um, few exceptions might be destroyers like the Carrick, for example, <laughs> or the Interceptor, though the Carrick might get some now. You mean the Carrick's not anti-fighter? Yeah, true, it's not anti-fighter. It's, destroyer. it's a destroyer, the new cool special role for a lot of ships, especially the smaller ones. And we will put two destroyers against each other. Navigating. Those being the Carrick destroyer with ion cannons and light turbo lasers. Both close range versions against the MC-40. Which carries um, mostly mid-ranged weapons, medium turbo lasers and a special new uh, missile type, which we'll get to. I'm betting on the MC40 for oh, this yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I also think MC40. Medium turbo is usually. But I mean, at the out. same time, though, the Carrick's a destroyer, so it'll still be able to do a lot of damage. I think the problem right now with the MC40 is that the firing arcs are too good <laughs> because I haven't changed them yet. Um, so if you get on the sides of it, it shouldn't be Terrible able to fire as much. But right now it can still do that, so. Full speed. 
That's a small problem. Yeah. I also want to discuss our, what yes, destroyers sir. mean for it. Like, destroyer, in our minds, means course, a sir. dedicated ship that like has specialized weapons to punch bigger yes, targets or harder arm armored targets. Uh, and But also, it's like it usually won't come with a lot of fighter support or uh, lots of point defense. It is mainly just heavy rounds, uh, and fighters can easily destroy destroyers. Fighters and bombers do. Uh, it's kind of like we're starting to, to get the rock, paper, scissors sort of um, design going on what categories beat what. But it's not as um, obvious. You're forgetting, you're forgetting one more thing about that, is that destroyers are very close range. No, True. Not all of them, so, but most. Most of them. Well, yeah. Most of them are pretty Great close range. Commander. And what you'll see is that in the case of this uh, Carrick versus MC-40, MC-40 is already firing. The Carrick has to get pretty close. So in a fleet fight, your fleet might be able to shut down a push from destroyers which would mean you'd have to have fighter support, you'd have to have capital ship support, cruiser support, to be able to get those destroyers into place. But once those destroyers get set, they'd be able to rip a hole in an enemy fleet and uh, give something for the battleships to exploit. Okay, real quick, before those missiles hit, I wanted to explain what they are. <laughs> um, because those are new missile type. Uh, they're plasma missiles, and they have a special effect uh, when they hit a target, they will subtract, I think, 50% of the shields instantly for 10 seconds. So after the 10 seconds, those shields will come back. But in that time, your target is very vulnerable, and if you take out the shields, they are gone for good. Like, yeah, like here, you can see, okay, this wasn't 50%, it was more well, like 25. But now I lost all these shields, and if this MC40 takes out my shields, I don't get them back. Now we are at firing range too. Okay, can I'll we get throw the power to the ion cannons? True. Okay. Okay, the shields are just down. Yeah, and another thing, uh, you saw the defend ability of the MC40, it just completely powered through, even though we shot with ion cannons. That's because those ion cannons on the Carrick are anti shield ion cannons, which is also a new. Uh, difference between ion cannons. This is probably going to turn out how we had howitzers where people are not going to be happy that we're calling what we're calling them. But basically, the two types of ion cannons that there's going to be, there's going to be one that's the anti-shield one, which is just good against shields. It doesn't disable abilities. And then there's going to be one that's more of a electronics disruption that will disable things like the power to shield abilities and lower a ship's rate of fire and all that stuff that you're used to the ion cannons doing before. Yep. Yeah. And you'll know if it's a stun versus a shield, if the ship that's being targeted has the electric particles, you know that the engines are down, the uh yeah, the fire rates are lowered. And it can't retreat. Um, yeah. So you'll know right away um, at least hopefully that mechanic becomes a little bit more deliberate and also allows us to, you know, spec out ships. Uh, not every ship can stun and shield damage uh, unless they have both types of weapons. Some ships only have, like in the case of the Carrick, only good against shields. Some stun your enemy and then use turbo lasers instead to take them down. So there's a lot more going on with that. Yeah, also the stun duration uh, used to be super short on the ion cannon, so it was really, if you retreat it and one ion cannon hit you, it could be, okay, a half second passed and now I can retreat again. Uh, now the stuns are a lot longer, so you notice them more in battle and they also matter more that way. Like, I think the stun durations are always like five seconds min minimum. And it also is going to better line up with the visual effect. Yeah. Okay. We have a recusant here over bees. What should we put up against that? Mm. Mm. I feel I like last a time I... or a windicator would just destroy it. 
Yeah, I remember last time we tried Dreadnought versus Rekusent. That was interesting. Uh, because the Gladiator is more of a support ship. Uh, Rekusent's a destroyer, and then Dreadnought is a just a, a brawler. Regular old forget brawler. Yeah, that's right. We do have a lot more like roles that um, we're designing with, and I, I probably would yeah, like to surface to the player because it'll be a lot yeah, easier. Yeah, I want that in the where well, missing this, is right now. Yeah, yep. I I would like to because there's a couple. There's a lot of different like roles that we could give ships and com combo them, and then that way at a quick glance you could be like, okay, this ship's a destroyer, but it's also a uh, I don't know, a carrier or whatever. That it's always depends on what type of ship you're looking at. Okay, right. what is your money on? My money's on the requisite. I, yeah, the thing, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> requisite, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, requisite. Rec it's got still... the big dick guns in the front. I mean, yeah, the... the thing. The thing about this matchup is they're not both destroyers. The the Dreadnought is a frigate that's a tanker, and then the Recusant is lots of guns. What? It's a cruiser type, not a frigate. Oh, that's right. My bad. Well, we're working out the names of everything right now, and then we have like our our categories and things are different from like the roles for code purposes and. Yeah. Also, I. We need to touch on an important subject right now, since we are at cruiser-sized oh, ships. Oh, which is, it's time! Finally, we can reveal something that's very, yeah, detrimental in the space we work, and will pretty much change how you play this game, which is this little thing here, the whole hard point. So, how this works is when you target the whole hard point, uh, the damage will be spread across the whole ship. Right, so if you focus a ship down, it might be smart to go for the whole hard point to don't lose damage um, on shooting at destroyed hard points. As you might know, that's a big issue with Empire at War. Um, but if you target the whole hard point, you won't lower the the damage of the enemy ship, or you won't take out engines and shield generators. So you always have to make make the decision: okay, do I only Want to kill this ship fast, or do I want to lower its uh, fire rate, engine power, whatever? Right. The balance there being that the individual hard points have low health. Most of the health is in the hull hard point. Uh, so, if you want to take out certain subsystems, it's better to target them. But Especially like Maxim with said, right. But like Maxim said, if you've got overwhelming firepower. And your firepower that you're like, for example, if your damage types are stronger against the ship you're targeting, it might just be better to target the hull and disintegrate it faster because you know your weapons are just going to do more damage outright to the type of target you're firing at. So there's but a lot going on with firing, this. When you're firing at the hull hard point, keep in mind that as damage is spread across the whole ship, it's not going to be destroying the individual like weapon system hard points. When the hull goes down, the entire ship goes down, but all of those hard points stay active. So yep. if you're fighting a bigger ship where it could be a bit more of a struggle, if you focus directly on the hull, you now have to deal with that ship's full damage output for the entirety of the game. Mm -hmm. And there is a little bit of a combo thing to it. There is situations where you can damage hard points, and then by targeting the hull, you will start blowing them the damaged hard points up. So it really... Yeah, there's a lot going on with this, and it, there's a lot to learn yeah, with and that experiment alone. with. Yeah. Uh, another big thing that you might see on the Dreadnought now is, huh, it's only four turbolasers that I can target. Where are the other hard points? Uh, they're still there. It even had has more than it used to, but you can't target them. So what we want to have is, even if you destroy these lasers here, the Dreadnought can still fire and isn't just useless popcap pop waste. So, most of the weapons are now untargetable on ships. Only like the very important ones, the ones that you actually want to destroy, are targetable. So, the decision making there is a little bit easier and it matters more. So, you don't have like, okay, I have to take out this hard point and this hard point and this hard point. I only have to take out this important hard point and then Roger, this ship is nerfed pretty hard 
Right. And then it also helps from a gameplay perspective because you don't have hardpoint spam on ships to where you're trying to struggle to target what you want to actually target. It's like only the specialized weapons. Also, a new Recusant model. Yeah, we have <laughs> Black Sun skin, finally. Yeah, props to Geronimo from Remake for that one. And, and then Maxim. Sly and me for the yeah. texture. Yep. Maxim learned to rig and texture now, so... Also, so the represent has <laughs> anti-fighter capability, if you see it That is true. Down. There's a lot of Rex different anti-fighter weapons. There's flak cannons, which lower defense of hit fighters, and then also repeating point defense weapons and laser cannons, so this thing is stacked <laughs> with stuff like that. Yep. But as we get closer, we'll explain what things like flak mean. Yeah. yeah, but this battle The cool gear... thing about... Yeah. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was going to say, the the Rekusen is neat because it is technically a predecessor to a lot of Moncal ships. And as you can see, the hull is very... Um, like, visually, the ship looks thin and unarmored. So there's a lot of uh, health in the shields. Mm -hmm. And then once the shields go down... And once yeah, the shields are down, the hull nice. kind of pops. Whereas you have the inverse on the Dreadnought. The shields are bad, but you could see that the hull is just extremely armored, and it's taking a, a very long time to blow up. So, Yeah, especially since this only has light turbo lasers. They right now only do 25% of their full damage against the heavy armor. So this thing just tanks for yeah. days, and now it's only the hull and the shield left. So as you can see, the hull's going down, and when the hull's going down, the shields are also going down. Yep. That's a neat little bug that we abuse for that. <laughs> <laughs> so please, uh, this shall never be fixed. We need it now. Yeah, as you can see, only since only the hole is targeted, this hard point won't blow up before the hole is completely at zero. We've exhausted our reinforcements. So Rekus the battle yep. is lost. So when the hull is destroyed, the whole ship is gone. So it's going to completely change how you play Empire War. Yep. Okay, so the next battle, the new kind of adjusted uh, Vengeance Frigate against the old outdated bull cruiser. <laughs> yeah, we're going to lean into tech here. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to show... High tech ship versus low tech ship, and then low tech ship versus high tech ship, or okay. era even, just era difference in general. Bull cruiser is a clone war ship, so yeah, and the bull cruiser still has its old role of being mainly an anti fighter ship. Um, it has a lot of these repeating point defense cannons, but it also packs some turbo lasers and heavy lasers. So, yeah, it's very unspecialized, can fend off against fighters somewhat, but besides that, it just doesn't do much. <laughs> Whereas the Vengeance yeah. here has very powerful <laughs> mass drivers that pass right through the shields so it can snipe off important hard points. And yeah, it's just generally very bulky ship, and yeah. It's more yeah, of an artillery yeah. ship, it's like a big Arquitans. <laughs> And as you can see, it now All rotates. Terminator mode engaged. <laughs> those turrets, which makes it look uh, a lot cooler when it fires those long barrels because the shots actually <laughs> fly straight. <laughs> oh yeah, he's l very high Z layer difference. And there we go, just blowing up those shields. And there it goes. Yeah, and just keep in mind that. Everything that you guys are seeing is very work in progress. Yeah, so that's... it's all subject to change. Always. Now we'll just blow up those engines. And then when the engines blow off, usually there will be engine effects turned off and then fires. This fire might not be enough, but yeah, we're getting there. Maxim just goes straight for the hull so that they can kind of see. Yeah. So we're going to leave that turbo laser active so that. So basically, until the bolt cruiser dies, that turbo laser is still going to be firing. Yep. So then it becomes a tactical decision. 
do I ki do I kill that gun, or do I just try and pump as much damage into the ship as possible? Yep. Matters right. more on the smaller engagements. Like right. The closer the call, the more important your decisions become. At the big battles, it might sometimes just come down to okay, I want to focus on this ship, so just fire at all, full damage there. And then I don't need to worry about losing damage and all that stuff. Too. Right, but it's like every, every, uh, I just love that it just resets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did, uh, did it move back up? I didn't. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's done with that ship. Now <laughs> bring those guns back up. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> okay. So now we have the Munificent, very popular ship in the current patch or current Tarkish version because of the long range like cannons that can just outrange anything. They still have those, those siege cannons, uh, and are just generally very long range units. But they don't tank a lot of damage, like they will melt <laughs> under heavy fire. Lightly armored, and not a lot of HP. And it's going to be going up against the Vindicator, which is essentially the Empire version of this same ship. Very is a long-range artillery platform. Um, so you're going to see that the uh, the ranges have been extended to beyond the sight ranges of some ships. So if you wanted to use the full long-range power you would have to have other ships that have, you know, really good sensors or... You have to are you saying scout, scout ships are a thing mm. now? There we go. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, yeah, you hear the... What a concept. The big-ass <laughs> siege gun. And there comes the heavy rounds from the Vindicator. It also has the iron cannons now in the front here, not on these fucking tips anymore. That's another thing we want to have hard points be hit more easily and not right on the tips of the model because then there's a lot of damage wasted because you just miss well you're not supposed to miss yeah now the bombers come in here burn that ship up which is i guess another thing we think we showed that off already but yeah when you're hit by proton torpedo the ship will start burning and lose 30 percent of the health i think is on that gun ends on the uh bombs versus the armor yeah <laughs> or the size of the ship but yes yeah it's yeah from these torpedoes at least against this ship it's 30 percent health lost but that will come back once the fire is extinguished but in that time the ship might already be dead so uh, and you can snipe other hard points a lot easier during that time yep so bombing runs have a nice supporting effect now also Look how the uh, the Vindicator and Munificent, they're kind of firing in volleys with each other. Yep. So that kind of helps now translate. Right the to... I want to yep. my and now, now the, it's burning, and now your hull is down to like, what, 20% or something? Yeah. It's like next volley. Show off the, the engines. Oh, they don't have fires. Oh. <laughs> Need to re rig a lot of ships now. <laughs> Dead. There it goes. Once yeah. the shields are down, the ship is just melting. Clearly outclassed by superior technology. But, I mean, two munis might do it. Right. The thing about that is Clone Wars units are cheaper in this time period, so you can spam them a lot easier. Yeah, but Vindicators are also pretty cheap, I would they say. Are. High tech, though. You, know. you have to invest into them. Yeah, you have to tech, but then you can build them a lot. Right, and then pop cap differences and all sorts of. There's still a lot of stuff that we got to balance and take layers, into consideration. lots of layers. <laughs> yeah, for now we just want to get the feeling right of these different weapons and chips, and when that's done, we can balance them in price, pop cap, all that stuff too. Figure that all out. It, it's a long progress, but we still want to keep you guys updated on what's happening, and not have you sit in the dark for so long. Right, that's why we're making these videos. Okay. We shall continue the showcase. <laughs> we have two ships that kind of mirror each other in that they have 
a similar role and look as well. Uh, the Liberator Cruiser, which I think is very unpopular ship in the current 2.8 release. Yep. And the Gladiator. Uh, both ships are somewhat similar tech, but I think Liberator might be higher tech though. I don't know. I think it's the the Liberator is more of a crew is more of a cruiser carrier, and the battleship or in the Gladiator is more of a frigate assault carrier kind of deal. So, my money's on the Liberator. Yeah, mine too. Uh, Liberator has some new weapon types now. It has two ion cannons here on the tips, because I think those claws here in the front they look like they carry weapons. And they give it uh, something useful besides only these turrets, which are now long-range light turbo lasers and then I think heavy laser cannons. So this thing can't really defend itself against fighters all too well, but that's why it carries fighters itself, so that's its defense, right? Yep, and plus it can kind of remove itself from the battle by being able to sit at range, so it's like a second line ship. Yep. Also, we should probably mention that how we balance these uh, different ranges is um, long range weapons reload slower than regular range weapons, and then the close range weapons, they're even quicker. So your DPS on close range ships is way higher than on regular turbo laser weapons. So once you get in there, after you took all the damage, uh, you have to take while moving to the enemy, you will outperform the enemy, damage-wise. Right, so if a destroyer gets in close to a Liberator, Liberator's already dead. Yeah, but here we can see um, Ion right, Cannons we outrange Chadiator, but being very useful. Can close in. Oof. And now we have all those missiles and rockets here happening. But the Gladiator is more geared towards um, anti-corvette duty as well with the assault missile launchers it has. Those can debuff the corvettes and yeah, do great damage against them. Uh, such high quality of life changes. Look at that. The turbo lasers aren't just landing, firing, and getting yeah. fighters. Also, the firing arcs are mattering now a lot more. Like these turrets can face forward, all of them, but the ones on the left here. Their firing arc is basically like this, so if I get to the right of the ship, it won't be able to fire. Okay, weird flickering. We're if we're working on. We don't know why it happens yet. Yeah, now now the Liberator's ion cannons are lost, and it got bombing run, so it lost some instant health. Oh no, it doesn't. Right, that's that that's that burning effect coming into play. Yeah, there goes one torpedo and. We are on fire. So now I wonder if that we can do where we can make it like the health slowly come back. No, no. <laughs> Not possible. Aww. Okay, but you can see, oh, this ship is taking a lot of damage. It's, uh, it's on fire. It's getting low. Well, here... It's trying to go on health. Why is this flickering? We hope to figure that all out <laughs> before the release, of course. But yeah, this this fight still takes a long time, especially now since most of the turbo lasers are gone. On the Gladiator, it doesn't do that much damage anymore. Right, also and relies like, on its know, bombers. The Gladiator, you can uh, you're comfortable to move closer to it since its damage output has been reduced, and the closer you get, just as a general rule of thumb, the more accurate your guns can fire. Some nice hangar fires. And the torpedo burn fire there in the middle, which is now over again. So we are in the clear to just mop up these bombers that yep, still take the, uh... some damage here. Yep, but now with this uh, cleanup operation, the very limited anti-fighter support that the Liberator has, because you can see it firing from the spine there. But the shots that it's firing, they're more geared towards uh, larger targets, because I believe those are heavy laser cannons. Yep. 
So it's basically just giving its moral support, letting its fighters do the do the work. Oh, there they got one. <laughs> <laughs> that will sometimes hit, though. Oh yeah, this fighter is just outmaneuvering the shots there. Come on, get it done, boys. Victory is ours. There it goes. Easy money. So Liberator now pretty much a good support ship, brings in some fighters and can go against the shields. Yep, it's just a bigger gladiator. Okay, now for some melting. Because the Alliance Assault Frigate is now um, the Dreadnought on steroids, pretty much. It is super stacked with close range medium turbo lasers, so the damage potential there is a lot higher and can penetrate heavier armor types way easier. Right, so when we talk about destroyers, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. And another cool combo that happens on this ship is it has a great speed too. So it can get into the range where its weapons are most effective and then deliver that great DPS. The trade-off uh, opposed to the Dreadnought is though it doesn't have the same armor type, so it can be penetrated by lighter weapons uh, more easily. Now we are getting into the firing range. Where our... And roast it. <laughs> our cannons just get in there. Like the Recusant Shields are still very good against uh, my medium weapons. I don't remember if I put balanced shields on it. Oh, that's another topic we haven't even started on yet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, more showcases. For coming, another so. video. Oh, it's actually pretty close here. Might want to well, go full ham mode. Have... <laughs> just, just murder it. Now, the hole is gone. The shields are gone, I mean, and now it's just time to completely blow that thing up. There it goes. Those boys, they punch. Very, very hard. Especially useful if you move them between two ships, so the left side and right side can both deliver their ordnance. In these one-on-ones, you only get to fire one of your broadsides, so... Yeah, you have to position your ships uh, properly in order to get the max use out of them. Which is Whoa, something. you mean proper tactics? Yeah. Impossible. It's like a combat simulator. Okay, for the Empire fights, uh, we wanted to show the Acclimator against uh, the Dreadnought and then also the Aquitans, I think, against the Interceptor. Right? Yep. So what's your money on? Interceptor Frigate or Aquitans? I'm gonna go... I don't know, that's a hard one. I'm gonna go with the Interceptor. Baby. Just because I think that the Aquitans is... The Aquitans is oh. more... Oh, oh no, we oh, we don't have that. Yeah, we have a Munificent. Well, <laughs> True. That's, not, that's a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like with this battle... I think we can we all expect the uh, uh, Aquitans to lose, but what I, I mean, want I to do if you can kite it, yeah, maybe. But what I want to show off with this is uh, how the accuracies work now against those smaller targets, right? So the Munificent has those big siege cannons, and I think it's medium ion cannons. Yeah. So those heavy guns, they will mostly miss our small frigate. Even the turbo lasers might miss us. Well, this ship is a big target, so we can just sit here at our max range and shell away, and we will hit most of our shots. Like, this is exactly what the Aquitans is good against, right? This right. is where it shines. It will be missed a lot by those big guns and can just slowly but surely take down the Munificent here. Oh, I didn't even expect that to turn out how it turns out, man. <laughs> closer closer than we thought it would be. Yeah. It will hit sometimes. If it hits, the Aquatons yeah, it hits, health it hits will hard. drop hard. Yeah. 
especially if the Munificent is able to land a full salvo. Yeah, but that won't really happen. Rip our pretends. Like we can kite also a little bit. Our turrets will turn correctly here. Yep, and you'll oh, see the one on the uh, left side of the ship he is not turning because it can't fire over the superstructure. Yep. Now, if we get closer, we are more likely to get hit by those turbolasers. So you really want your aquitans to stay at long range and then shell away. But if they get uh, encountered by, yeah, as we saw the Nebulon B, where it misses the target, uh, it falls apart pretty quickly. Doesn't have great shields or whole strength and can't really defend itself against fighters. Like here's the fighter cannons it has shooting off, but they are not that great. Well, it's almost like you have to pay attention to your fleet composition. Exactly. It's absolutely Whoa. crazy. Yeah, now, now we're about to lose, so let's get back into range. Oof. Oof. Oh, this is getting close. So the Arquitans as well to kind of help balance it is going to have a blind spot, bro, bro. Is this is so going to win. Oh, it won. There we go. Yeah, this is exactly what the Arquitans should do. <laughs> it punches above its weight class. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't expect that at all. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so the blind spot of the Aquitans uh, make sure that when it runs away from the enemy, it can't really fire at it anymore. So you can't do the hit and run tactics with it, which uh, is encouraged more on rebel ships. Uh, like most of the Corellian ships have turrets that can turn a uh, full 360 degree. So they allow you to run away and still shoot at the enemy. Just like the opening scene from A New Hope, so <laughs> it's canon and it's in the game here. <laughs> but it's since canon, not said. Yeah, and since Empire is more about those line battles and stuff like that, they they don't retreat, they go in there. Their firing angles are more uh, facing forward and never backwards. They don't run. Roger. Wir rücken vor. Okay, this battle... Um, Acclimator Cruiser against Dreadnought. So, what would you think? Who wins this? Uh, Dreadnought, easy clap. I wouldn't say easy clap. I still think the Acclimator can hold up to it a little bit. But the problem here is the Acclimator has no turbo lasers at all. Um, these small cannons here on the sides, they are point defense weapons, as they are in the law, I think. <laughs> Um, so those can fight off uh, fighters a little bit, not that, like, pretty efficient. I think they're heavy lasers. I don't remember how this thing's equipped. Yeah, I remember. Uh, those are point defense cannons, and then in the trenches it has heavy laser cannons. So it has the weapons that are more useful against corvettes and frigates, not really the cruisers, especially the heavy armored ones like the Dreadnought. It can't really penetrate that armor. And then to top it all off, it also has the assault missile launcher, so it can stay at mid range with those weapons and support a little bit from there, delivering its fighters to the combat. And yeah, just screen against corvettes if they get too close with the laser cannons and the assault missiles. So it doesn't really do well in its own class, but against the class below it, it does really well. Yep, it's very opposite to the Aquitans. <clears throat> okay, so now we'll see those fighters just going in there. The Arc 170, which is equipped with repeating lasers, but I think we showed that off in the fighter combat. Yeah, oh, we're way too close. <laughs> yeah, now we'll see, okay, we are always shooting at the Dreadnought, but our damage is just not that high compared to what the Dreadnought's close range dual turbo lasers can deliver. Yep, and because it's close range, it's got higher rate. Of, it's got the highest rate of fire of any of the light turbos. Yep. But the thing is now, uh, we have to fight the superiority, so 
Our heavy bomber here, the Arkman 70, can help us out a little bit. And we should focus down those turbo lasers. But the, uh, the heavy laser cannons on the Dreadnought, since the Ark is a bigger target, yeah. those guns are able to shoot down the Arks more effectively than they would, say, the V-Wing. Yep. But right now, those... Oh, yeah. There's only one Ark 170 left. Yeah. Oh, no, two. Okay, but if they go to the opposite side here, the laser cannons will shoot at them, and they will hit them. Yeah. Because as Press just said, big targets and slow speed. Yeah, it's pretty much mob up here. Dreadnought doing its role perfectly. Yeah, GG Acclimator. Just armored way too hard for non turbo laser weapons here. Yeah, and their, their health comes back. That was inflicted too by the torpedo burn. So, yeah, no way the Acclimator can win this. And. Dead blows. Dead. Vengeance, it seems, yep, so that's pretty today. much some Clone Wars units um, going up against each other. And we think we pretty much got it perfect, <laughs> I would say. The feeling and the results as well. An Acclimator, in my opinion, shouldn't win against the Dreadnought, since the Dreadnought is specifically made for this type of combat. Right. And the Arquitans, this was, yeah, the perfect target for it. The turbo lasers always hit and they penetrated the Munificence light armor perfectly, so... Okay, now I'm alone again. <laughs> Doing the last um, few battles here. Press also had to go, so... Yeah, I'm lonely again, boys. And... Yeah, the last two matchups in this video will be the Interceptor Frigate against the Arquitans yet again. It's just a very cool ship to showcase. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Those two ships are both kind of destroyers, but... Ah, well, they, they both punch above their weight classes, I guess more what I should say. Like, the Interceptor here has turbo lasers and proton torpedoes. So it can really mess up those bigger ships, but it doesn't have any anti-fighter weapons at all. And it will miss corvettes like crazy. So this thing will most likely just lose against the CR-90. And other frigates, but yeah. Against cruisers in large numbers, those things can do some damage. Um, yeah, to clear up maybe some confusion that... Uh, could have happened here with the accuracies that we talked about here in this video a lot. Um, the accuracy of weapons always depends on the category of ship you're firing at. So, for example, this here is considered a corvette in the code. Um, so if a weapon fires against the corvette, it might be very inaccurate and then it will miss a lot. But the same weapon might be uh, super accurate against uh, ships of the cruiser or frigate category. So we keep those categories uh, strictly to the size of ships. So that smaller ships are missed a lot more than the bigger ones and we balance them that way so that they just completely blow up against those big ships but instead the big ships will waste a ton of damage if they focus down smaller ships. And by doing it that way, we hope that people will build more mixed fleets to counter every type of uh, ship that you might encounter. Okay, this battle... As I said, both punch above their weight class, uh, though they do it in different fashions. The Arquitans does it more from afar, while the Interceptor Frigate is close-range brawler ship. So it has those nice close-range turbo lasers with a high firing rate and then also the proton torpedo launcher that um, can burn up those ships. Yeah, but it's still way smaller and has a lot less health. So actually, the Aquitans, with its laser cannons that it also has, can hit it. So it actually does win, but not with the turbo lasers. Okay, there it goes. Sometimes we will still hit it, 
<laughs> but it's not super likely. So yeah, that's that's kind of the balance here. That's why frigates can survive if they're in front of a star destroyer because they get missed, not because they have like a ton of health. If a star destroyer round hits a nebulon B, it will just blow up. Okay, last battle of the day um, <clears throat> is with two somewhat higher tech Time units, both long range ships before. the Corellian destroyer and the twin blade frigate, um, which used to be called Alliance Light Frigate, but I thought it was a pretty lame name, so I decided to say, hey, why don't we call it P Twin Blade, because it has the two blades in the front there. So yeah, this boy here, Corellian Destroyer, got some new turrets on the top and bottom here, those dual turrets there, and on the sides as well. It is all long-range variants. Those single barrel ones are mediums, and those smaller ones are light duals. And in the front it also has an ion cannon. Um, but very little fighter defense. So this is like another destroyer, long-range destroyer. And because it's a Corellian ship, it can also fire 360 degrees, which makes it good for hit and run, which is further encouraged with the power to engines ability. Okay, it's facing off the twin blade frigate, which is has a very specific role now. It has heavy siege turbolasers, which mean they will punch through any type of armor super easily. But it also has um, flak cannons here equipped in those parts where on the dreadnought there's the turbolasers. Uh, and then it also has some untargetable long-range turbolasers of some kind. So what the twin blade is supposed to do is it sits behind your front line, shoots at targets far away with the siege turbo lasers, and then helps green against fighters with the flag cannons. That's kind of the role we want this ship to have. So against the Corellian destroyer, which yeah is made for 1v1 battles, it doesn't really have a chance and it will try to run away. But yeah, there it's pretty useless. Also, the balance might still be off in some places. Like maybe the twin blade needs more weapons, or this guy here has too many. Yeah, this will just get down to the balancing. But yeah, the, the idea for, for these ships is there already. Like the role they should fulfill. Yeah, we could just blow up that ship pretty easily. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it will be a rather long one. But why not? Those are fun battles and we got a good bit of explanation about the general design philosophy of the rework in here and all that. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out. We will do um, the next class of ship in the next showcase, which will be the capital ships. So. ISDs, MC80s, Venators, all that goodness. But until then, uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.